This lesson is about current voltage graphs. What we're looking here is to produce experimental data. Obviously, I'm not going to do that on the video, but I'll show you the circuit for a current voltage relationship in a wire, a filament lamp, and a diode. The good news is these are pretty much the same as what you did at GCSE. Um, we need to be able to draw the graphs and show, to show the relationships, and we need to be able to re relate them to Ohm's law, and we need to explain the relationships with a bit of a model of the current. So here's our sort of circuit that we'd build. We need some kind of variable power supply. Um, one way to do this, at least, is with a potential divider circuit. We'll talk about these more later. But we've got a fixed resistance, and we tap off some of the voltage from our 12 volts, which is always across the 16 ohm resistor. So we've got a variable voltage across the wire. Um, we can measure the potential difference across the wire by connecting a voltmeter in parallel just with the wire. And we can measure the current through the wire with our amateur in series. We can do that for a wire, or for a bulb, or in a minute for a diode. So I'm going to show you the animation of the little circuit that does that for us. So here are our three circuits. Um, this is our wire circuit. Um, so you'll notice that we can get the variable resistor here. We can slide and change the voltage there, and we get a straight line graph. So as we increase the voltage, we increase the current, but more importantly, the current is proportional to the voltage. So here's our current and our y-axis is proportional to the voltage. If I change this uh, voltage so that we go the other way, and we slide the resistor along so the, the voltage is just pointed in the opposite direction, then we get the negative part of the graph. Okay, so this is a graph where the voltage is proportional to the current. It's kind of what you'd expect. If you double the potential difference, you'll get twice as much current flowing through. Okay, We could work out the resistance by doing um, 1 over the gradient of the graph. Okay, it's important to understand here that if the resistance is lower, you'll get more current for the same potential difference. So we'll get a steeper line on the graph. So a steeper line means a lower resistance. Okay, Here's our bulb. Same thing applies. So as we increase the potential difference across the bulb, we notice there's a clear difference. This is not a proportional relationship. We still get more current when we apply more potential difference. But in this case, the graph curves. OK, we'll talk about why that is in a minute. If I change the potential so that um, it's trying to make the electricity go the other way around the circuit, then again, you'll notice that this is a proport uh, sorry, this is a symmetrical relationship. So it just goes the other way. So I get this kind of S-shaped kind of curve where increase in potential difference increases the current, but not proportionally. OK, here's the third one, the diode, uh, which is quite different to the first two. So you'll notice with the diode, if the, cu if the current is going the, the right way, if you like, through the diode, if it's going this way through the diode, the way the triangle's pointing, we get a little bit of a time here, so a small voltage where there's no current at all, but however much voltage I apply across there, the voltage never gets over about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a volt. So this line goes along the axis until about 0 0.6 of a volt, and then almost vertically upwards. So however much current I try and put through the diode, it takes 0 0.6 of a volt to kind of open the diode up, if you like, and after that the current can flow through it uh, without losing any energy. If I change the potential and I make this one negative, Okay, then what happens is the line, if you can see the red line appearing there, just goes flat along the graph, and I don't get any current at all in the negative direction. So if I'm trying to make the current through, flow this way, right to left on this picture, through the diode, I get no current at all, because the diode only lets the electricity go in one direction. Okay, so here's our voltage current graph of the wire. Um, what we notice is the current is proportional to the voltage, the resistance is constant, so if you wanted to pick any points along this line to find the resistance, you'd get the same answer. Um, but if the resistance was higher, then I'd get a lower gradient because I'd get less current for the same potential difference. Here's the graph for the bulb. Okay, As the voltage increases, the current increases, but not proportionally because the resistance increases. Why is this? Well, it's because the metal ions in the wire vibrate. So there are more collisions with the electrons. The electrons lose energy as they go through the wire because they collide with the metal ions. The more um, 
the metal ions vibrate because the hotter the wire is, the more energy the electrons lose, so the higher the resistance. Okay, this is Ohm's law. So Ohm's law says that the current is proportional to the potential difference at a constant temperature. So the only one of those things that this um, law applies to is the fixed resistor, the wire, because the current is proportional to the potential difference. So the wire is the one that's the ohmic conductor. Okay, here's our diode circuit. And this is the kind of uh, simplified graph for you. So the key points are here, if we've got a forward current that's going the same direction as the triangle on the diode, we get a big current quite easily um, with a very low resistance once we've passed this threshold at about 0 0.6 volts. So not much current for 0 0.6 volts, but then a very big current quite easily. Right In the reverse direction, basically no current until we get to about minus 50 volts and then um, the electrons have enough energy to sort of go the wrong way through the diode and we get this okay but this area here is the important point and try and remember this number 0 0.6 volts to get the diode to kind of open up and let the current through sometimes ask these sort of questions um, in a sort of GCSE model these two voltages well this way the current's trying to go this way around the circuit so the diode's pointing the right way so you might think 12 volts this will be 12 volts because the energy just goes through the diode the electricity rather just goes through the diode okay but what you need to understand now slightly more subtle right it takes about 0.6 of a volt to open this diode up so you've only got 11.4 volts left there okay because 0.6 of a volt was actually used to get the diode and um, to let the electricity go through it if you've got the reverse diode so if the electricity is trying to go the wrong way through this diode the diode will stop the electricity so there's no volts at all left there because there's no current flowing because all 12 volts are used here trying to get the electricity to go through this diode the wrong way, but not succeeding.